Hi guys, Cicero from Artix Entertainment here, and a long time ago I asked what you guys want to see more of on our YouTube channel. A lot of you said that you wanted to see some tutorials about Flash and how to get into Flash. So I'm going to give you a really quick and dirty, very simple, basic intro to Flash. We're going to make a, make a little throwing star shuriken. But first I want to get into some of the differences between raster graphics and vector graphics. Um, if you've ever worked with Photoshop, then you probably know that raster graphics are what a lot of people think of as just like pixelated graphics. This is a raster graphic, and blown up, you can see it gets crazy pixelated. Which is okay, sometimes that, that's what you want, especially with like Minecraft-style games where they're showing a lot of 8-bit, 16-bit. Um, but if you want a nice clean something, anything, vector is the way to go, and Flash is a vector program. The difference here is that no matter how far we zoom into this, it will not get pixelated because it uses points to draw with math. See? No pixels. I'll show you what I mean by drawing with math. Each one of the points here in this thing, I made it a little earlier today. Uh, yes, for those of you who recognize this, this is the Brightfall Commander set, and it is, I have adapted it to go into uh, Adventure Quest Mobile. So you'll see this in there. Um, Dage originally did the art, and I had to do things like back shoulders, a back leg, because as you know, in Adventure Quest Worlds, it's all black back there, so. All right, if we use our subselection tool like this, we can see a lot of the, every one of these dots is a control point. It's basically a vector. The more of these vectors that you have, the more detail, the more curves, it can look nicer, but it also bloats the size of the file, especially if it's an SWF. If you're playing something in Flash, like Adventure Quest Worlds, if you have a file, a weapon, an armor, something like that, with a bunch of these vectors in it, then it becomes a very large file. And the more large files you transfer, the more expensive it becomes, because your bandwidth bill increases. So it's always a good idea to try and keep your vectors low. So let's see how to do that in a brand new program. If I wanted to, I got my hotkeys here, Z, X and C. Z is my selection tool, X is my line tool, and C is my pencil. If I wanted to draw a big stupid derp circle like this, that's great, but it's awful, and the vectors are all over the place, and if I wanted to, I could use the selection tool here and try and like bend it into shape to make it look more like a pretty circle. More advanced technique, excuse me. <coughs> I could use the smoothing tool, which I have bound to control I, to smooth it out and make it more of a perfect circle. But it would take a really long time, even still, to get a perfect circle. If you want a perfect circle, just use the oval tool. Here's the oval tool. Uh, if you want it without a fill, just come up here, no fill button. Hold down shift, it makes a perfect circle. Let go of shift, oval. Circle, oval, circle, oval. I can explain the differences between circles and ovals, but if you don't know that, you should not be watching this tutorial. You should be in elementary school. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's make a shuriken. First, we're going to need a box. A perfect box again. Square, rectangle, square, rectangle. So let's make a perfect square. And right now, I think I have my... I'm going to select the entire thing. Your selection tool is handy because if you want to, you can take your rotation point. Here's the rotation point for the object. And I can rotate it right around that thing. Or, I can shift the rotation point to, like, down here in a corner, and then it rotates around the rotation point. So no matter where you move it, that's where it rotates from, which is why, like, this guy, going back to him, as an example, his rotation point is, or should be, up here in the shoulder, and it's not. Look at that. So if we want to move his hand right here, then, hey! Yeah, that's broken. Okay, so... We want to, we actually want a perfect diamond, not a perfect square. Thankfully, I have my snapping turned on. See how it snaps? Click, right into place. Snapping's up here in view. Snapping, snap to objects, or just control shift U. You probably want to memorize that one. Let's bisect it. You see, snapping again. You don't have to have it right on the point. It kind of knows where you want to go. Nope. All right, now we have a kite. Now we're going to make our shuriken shape with some squircles. Circles. 
They're not actually squirgles. That's a new term that Artix is using for things like squares with rounded edges. Okay, that's good. All right, um, paste in place, which is going to be one of your best friends. If you, you can control C to copy and control V to paste like you do in any other program, but if you want to paste in place, control shift V puts one right exactly where you copied it from. So lining them up is very, very simple. Uh, if we selected the circle right here just by double clicking, it would pick the entire thing because the line weight is exactly the same. So we have to be careful not to do that. Yeah, that's better. Well, not quite. Yeah, good enough. Um, if we wanted to shift the line weight, we could select the entire circle, go over here to properties, and here's our line weight controller so we can make a big, fat, dumb circle. But we don't want that. We want everything roughly right here. Although, here, I'll show you something else that's cool. If you change the color of whatever it is that you're doing, like lines, here's your line color, here's your fill color. And if I wanted to make some... Oh, really? No, just just, just be 1.0, okay? Thanks. All right, so if I made a bunch of circles like this, and I felt like I wanted to... I don't know, I use this a lot when I'm doing vector art <clears throat> and I have to make a lot of changes and then I have to get rid of a lot of the lines that I was using, I will take my pencil tool and just draw a line through all of them that are the same color and then I can just select it once, delete, and it gets rid of everything of that color. So pick yourself an editing color. Okay, let's grab our circles. Face in place, go down here. Again, don't expect to be super fast at this from the outset. I've been working with this program for like more than 10 years now. So, color, black, 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 black. All right, too much black. But that's okay, because we're about to pull our lines out. And there's our general shape of our shuriken. We also want to, we also want to circle. In the center, because most shuriken have a circle punched out of the center. I'm assuming that's for weight, to make them weighted better. I'm eyeballing this. You will probably do a better job, because I'm just trying to do it as quickly as possible. All right, now we need our lines back. And I can either go through here with the ink bottle tool and give each thing a... Oh! Give each... Give e... Give... Give e... Give e... You know what? I'll just do that. I could give each side its own line color if I really wanted to, but apparently it just wants to have the whole thing lit up. And that's okay, because I wanted that anyway. All right, now we're going to be moving some lines. If you select a line, you can use the arrow keys to move it around, but that's pretty slow. If you hold down shift and then use the arrow keys, one, two, three, one, two, three, then they move in large chunks, one, two, three, one, two, three, which is extremely handy. We're making the blades, by the way. One, two, three, one, two, three. For our shuriken, in case you weren't aware and wanted to know why I was moving these lines around and counting out loud to myself. That doesn't feel right. One, two, three, one, two, three. I guess it is. One, two, three, one, two, three. And one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right. Now, our blades are going to be divided right here at this point because they are sharp blady blades. So let's pick some random colors and color our sides. I'm picking random colors because again I'm doing this just as quickly as human pos humanly possible. Well, probably not that quick. Somebody's probably faster. All right. Uh, select everything and go away. Now let's think about our light source. Whatever you're doing, always think about which direction your light is coming from. Let's go back to the day chart for a second. Look at this guy. See how he's got shadows here and here and on this side? It's a brighter color gray than it is over here. Same here, you see the shadow of this thing being dropped on his abs right here. You see the shadow of the shoulder piece being dropped on top of this. That's because Dage decided that the light source was going to come from this direction and stayed with it the entire time. Even the face of this guy has the shadow over here because the light is coming from this direction, the hair too. It's really, really important to keep a consistent light direction. 
if you really want something to look spectacular. This is not going to look spectacular, but that's okay. As long as we are consistent, we're still learning. Let's give it some nice grays. I don't really like these grays. They're too gray. Move it up into the blue just a little bit because if you ever look at steel, it's actually more of a bluey color. Not really just flat gray. It can be gray and gray and then our darker color. We'll go here. And now we have a consistent light source, more or less. Um, still kind of flat, so let's add a little bit of shine. There's a couple ways to add shine. It really depends on the shape of whatever that you're doing. And it's really, really important. This is the most important thing I'm going to say in this entire tutorial. Draw from reference. Don't just make stuff up in your head. If you want to draw a shuriken, I'm just doing this because I've done it a million times before and I, I know what a shuriken looks like. But if you want to draw a shuriken from what you know what it looks like, make sure that you really seriously draw from examples first. You want to know what the shuriken looks like before you just dive in and start doing stuff. So let's make a line, bend it. This is kind of the uh, standard way that we have been doing shines for quite some time. And it really depends on what it is that you're shining up. Hopefully, one of the other guys, one of the more talented artists, I'll get them to do a real tutorial for you guys instead of just a quick and dirty how to use Flash. If you can get your hands on Flash through some method or another, I'm not saying you should steal it. I'm just saying that if you happen to come across a copy that is maybe, you know, older and closer to free, it's a good thing to practice. This won't be a shine, this will be a little shadow. Okay, better, still flat. Another way if we wanted to do shine would be, let's zoom in on this guy, highlight the edges. Just take pure white. And that is a sharper highlighted edge which, yeah, looks pretty good. We'll just keep that here in the example. Um, this flat black is too flat and black, so let's add a gradient. Gradients are also very processor intensive. If you're adding a gradient, then you're going to be slowing down whatever project that you're doing in Flash. And I mean in the SWF, once you publish it out. See, look at all these striations. It is mathematically computing the difference between this color and this color and filling it in with the middle. And every time that like moves, the computer flips out, tries to figure it out. Oh, what I did here. This is the gradient transform tool. It's right up here next to your transform tool. Click it, and you can change the size of your gradient. You can change the rotation, which is what we're going to be doing here. We don't want too much gradient on this thing. We still want it to look cool. All right, so now let's give it just a little bit more character. If we've got a circle here in the middle, we could give it just a little bit of character by increasing the size of the circle. If you want to increase the size of something, and again, keep it like straight so it doesn't get all crazy flat, just hold down shift, and that changes the size. If it's on snap two right now, so if that's driving you nuts, then again, just control shift U turns snapping off and you can size it smoothly, which is what we want here. We're going to increase the size here just a hair. And there, since the light's coming from this direction, the lip of our little detail would be right there. I'm going to fill it in. And we're going to select, I think, turn it off. There we go. That should be darker. That's too light. Still too light. A little darker. Okay, there we go. Now, he's looking pretty good. Uh, he might need an outline. Sometimes you want things to have outlines, sometimes you don't. I'll show you a quick trick for outlining things. Get yourself a rectangle box that is empty. Draw a rectangle. Fill it with, 
I don't know, something awful. Pick the color that you want to fill with. In this case, it's probably going to be a darker gray. Maybe that same gray as before. All right, buddy. If you can click in the color box, you can sample a color from anywhere that's visible. So let's do that. And then we're going to use our ink bottle tool and just click anywhere in the red and it outlines everything with the same outline. The outline could stand to be a little thicker. So let's bring that up to two. Yeah. Oops. And I'll get rid of that other stuff. And again, if we want to add a little bit more character, we can add a little chink taken out of the, uh, the blade here. Not too big. Like someone with a katana deflected it a long time ago. And it took a chunk out of it. You gotta be careful, especially without clipping, if you don't have your clipping on because you might end up selecting, accidentally selecting like the entire thing like I just did. I had the, the whole color section here. Um, he'd be darker, right? So let's sample this darker color from earlier. Fill that in there. Take out the lines so it's only on the outside. Okay. Zooming. If you have your zoom here, you can either put it on enlarge or reduce, but if you keep it on enlarge and you hit alt, it changes it to reduce. So you can zoom in or you can click to reduce. But here we go. There is our shuriken. Uh, we could change it into a movie clip so we can reuse it over and over again by selecting the entire thing. Let's hit F8. Make it a movie clip. Call it star. And our rotation point's right here in the center, so it can fly wherever you want it to. There you go. That's the long and short of it. Um, if this was fun, go ahead and like it. If you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you have any ideas for other things that you want to see, go ahead and leave it in the comments of this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye.